Welcome back. It's Coach Evans here with Sip the Side of Films. And, you know, yesterday I did the, the camera check and we're here, you know, back trying to get into the algorithm of uh, putting out good video and good quality Ravens content. So um, yesterday I talked about doing this Hollywood Brown video. And today I looked at all 100 um, attempts or targets for Marquise Hollywood Brown. And um, the stats I came up with from it are interesting. Roll the intro. So, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, make sure you uh, hit the like button. Uh, also, hit the subscribe button. And once you hit the subscribe button, click the bell notification so you can be notified when I drop these videos. And you can get this fire content. So, um, without further ado, again, I'm here Coach Evans and we're talking about Hollywood Brown. And um, again, I looked at his his um, targets, and I went through the targets. I kind of wrote the name of the route down to kind of give point of reference, and I came up with uh, some pretty interesting stats. So I'm just gonna read the stats off to you. And then on the back end, I have a couple of clips to kind of show you, you know, get a little film study. Not very many clips, but I'm gonna re get to reading these stats. And as I read them, I'll put a little thing or something so you can go along with me somewhere here on the screen um deep over routes and so i'm going to try to explain what the route is if it's not clear cut to give some kind of reference so deep over route is basically meaning if he's on the right side he's running across the field at a depth of 15 to 25 yards to get to at least the other hash maybe even the other sideline so he's coming from one side of the field all the way to the other that's what i call a deep over route and on those routes and as long as those routes take to develop, six for six. Six targets, six catches. Crazy. But he's six for six on, on those deep over routes. Next one is a dig. And on the high school level, digs are normally 10 yards and in. But on the NFL or college level, they're anywhere from 8 to 15 to 20 yards. So on, on that route, he's four for six. Four completions out of six attempts. And the, the incompletions could be bad throws, could be defenders breaking them up. It could be a, a, a any number of things, but it's only is either, for this instance, you either caught it or you didn't. So that's kind of where it is. So it's no really in between, no gray area on this. Either you caught it or you didn't. And with Diggs, he was four for six. Post routes. I think everybody know what a post is. Um, you can kind of give them, give them a head at the top of the route at like 10, 10 to 15 yards and then stick it toward the middle of the field. And, um, you know, post or simple, everybody know what post are. Deep rap, deep ball. You know, one of the things they say Lamar need to work on. Four for 10 to Hollywood. It's 40% on post to Hollywood. And there are a couple of, of times, you know what, I got to go back, I got to put some context to this too. All of these passes are not from Lamar. So let's keep that in mind too. Um, you got some RG3, RG3 thrown in there. You got some Trace McSorley thrown in there. And you got some Huntley thrown in there too. So all these passes are not from Lamar. So I can't just say Lamar was 4 for 10 on post with um, Hollywood. Because I remember distinctly one of them being from RG3. And he threw the ball way back there. Like if he was throwing it to me, he hit that Ravens jersey behind my head. But um, let's move on. Hitches. Everybody know what hitches are? Simple hitches. 8 for 8. And and a lot of the hitches, if they were not clear cut, um, run your 5 or 6 and stop. That way he ran the route and he kind of settled in a zone. And that's one of the notes I got across the top. Hollywood is great at finding space in zones. Great at it. He, he does a good job of sitting down and then working and making showing his numbers that present himself to be open. But on hitch routes, he's eight for eight. Uh, shallow routes. Shallow routes to me are you're basically driving across the field at a depth of no more than three to four yards. At max, three to four yards. A lot of shallow routes are basically one or two, but at max to try to keep some continuity with the routes. Shallow routes are three to four yards from where you're going, but you're going across the formation. So if you start on the right, you're going to the left, start on the left, going to the right. Uh, six of 10. Six of 10. So that's him coming across, avoiding linebackers, then getting the ball. And there's a couple of times they would um, have Hollywood maybe on the left. And then Andrews and somebody else on the right. And those two guys will come across and try to block the linebackers. Chasing Hollywood and he catch it coming on the deep. Sort of like a screen. 
but I still got to call it a shallow route. But it, in my mind, it's really it really was a screen. Um, and on shallows, he's six for ten. Now I got double moves. I only saw two. I only saw two that I that I think were double moves. Um, he was running like a out and turned it up or a dig and turned it up, and he was overthrown by Huntley. And that's the um, I want to say that was um, later in the Bills game with. You know, could have got us back in the game. And then another one from RG3, he ran like a flat route, quick out. And I don't know if he was supposed to be an out and up, but he got to the sideline, turned it up, and RG3 threw that. So I don't know if that was a double move or it's just a continuation of the route because the ball wasn't out. But I got him 0 for 2 in double moves. And I remember those two distinctly because I think he could be deadly at double moves, and that's why those two are sticking out to me. Uh, seam routes. It's really, that's kind of Andrews' territory, working in the middle of the field, anywhere from two yards inside the hash to two yards outside the hash. And he was one for one on that. One for one on that. Now, this next route is what I saw the most of. 16 attempts. Uh, completed 10 of them on a quick out. And to me, a quick out is anywhere from a three to six yard out. You know, it's, it's timing route most of the time. It's bam, bam, maybe three steps at most into the flat. So six to ten on that. A lot of a lot of this is the most ran route on this sheet. Is the the quick out sixteen times. The next closest one is ten, and that's with the post and the shallow. Yeah, the next closest one is ten. Um, let's go to fade. Now fade, he's three for eight. But and the way I watched it, the way I did it on um leak not game pass or whatever the NFL thing is, I got all his hundred targets. But it started me from the last game. So it went from the second round of playoffs down to week one. And so on the fades, the first three fades were complete. And they were beautiful. So that means they were late in the season. But so, I mean, early in the season, we were com weren't completing those at all. Because the three ones I got completed are early in my count. And all the later ones are early in the season, if that makes sense. So the first three were completed and some beautiful throws too. I think I'm gonna try to go find one or two of those. Cause they, they talk like Lamar can't throw. He was dropping those balls in the bucket. But Hollywood's three of eight on that. Curl route. Uh curl route in high school is probably ten to twelve. College in the league is it could be anywhere from fifteen to eighteen. And uh and on the curl routes too, he did a good job of when the ball wasn't like there right when it should have been. He did a job of working left and right and making himself open. Same thing he did on the hitch. And the curl is just extended a long hitch. And he would, you know, find zones, find holes in the zones, and present himself and make the catches for the most part. All right, deep outs. So deep outs got to be anywhere from uh, 10 to 20 yards. And that's basically like a quick out, but just deeper. And it, it requires more time and probably got a three. If you're on the center, you're probably getting a five-step drop. Uh, if you're in a shotgun, you're probably getting a three-step drop. Um, and depending on the other route combinations on the center, you may get a seven too. But if you get a seven, that deep out is probably the first read. Um, and on the deep outs, he was three for three. So that's one, you know, deep outs, quick outs. If you if you just throw out routes in one combination, that's 13 for 19, which is a great percentage. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but 13 for 19 is a great percentage. All right, let's move on to... Slot fade. One slot fade, it was incomplete. I think he was overthrown. I don't think it was um, defended or anything. I think he was overthrown. Uh, next one is a corner route, which I think he could be deadly at. 0 for 4. Now, you got your basic corner route where you push up from 12 to 15 and break it out. Then you got this um, this different, let me see what, the, what it's called universally. I, don't, I can't remember what it's called universally. Where you start, say you're the outside receiver. You push in at about 5 push up to about 12 to 15 and push back out. I still consider that a corner too. I can't remember the universal name for that route at the time because um, I haven't used it in our offense in a while. But um, that's a corner too. Over four. Now, now routes. Uh, now routes are basically if he lined up at a certain spot when the ball snapped, he just really just turned to show his numbers to the quarterback. Now, he did that. they did that out of empty sun where they sent other guys deep or they just – you know, raised up and threw it to him, and he ended up, you know, catching, what, four or five of those. One of them was skipped to him. I think Lamar skipped one to him. That's why they, they wasn't they were not 100% on that. Um, next is slant, slant routes. And 
all of these slant routes, and I think all of them, are not traditional. I think one was a traditional slant. The rest of them was the RPO, where we run maybe outside zone to the right, and he'll if the linebacker triggers on that outside zone, Lamar pulls it out and throws the slant. So basically the same play Hollywood scored on in that first his first game versus the Dolphins, that's what these variations of slant saw, except for one. So basically he ran eight, you know, that play eight times and they completed five of them. And they had one regular slant that they completed also. Well, they completed four of those and then one regular slant. So it was five for nine. And then if you look at all those slants, there was a lot of windows where Lamar probably shouldn't have tried to fit the ball in, and he did it anyway. And they were, like, kicking off people's ankles and whatnot. But if he hadn't thrown it low, uh, it may have been picked. So I understand how he was trying to fit it in there, but that's where those slants came from. Next next uh, topic is scramble drill. So this could have been any num- a bunch of any number of routes, but Lamar ended up scrambling or Huntley ended up scrambling or who else? Um, Max Sorley or RG3. And Hollywood found himself the target after your know, scramble drill. And on those, he was four for nine. Like uh, one of the, the, the best scramble drills is uh, the Cowboys game. He ran uh, like a curl or something maybe. And Lamar came out the backside and Hollywood just reversed out and got a touchdown on it. So that's that's scramble drill. That's what these plays are. He was four for nine of that one. Um, I wrote bubble down, but not counting the bubble because the way we were running it, that's really a running play. When Hollywood would come in motion and Lamar would fake the run to somebody else and kind of shoot the ball out to him, that's in the stat book, that's a running play, even though he's throwing it. So I took that one off. Uh, he had jet, one jet sweep, and normally you don't count jet sweep unless they catch it and kind of throw it up. And that's a pass. That way if they drop it, it's, it's incomplete. So we had one of them, which obviously completed. Didn't get a lot of yards. Uh, comeback. Comeback is a traditional receiver route that a lot of the great receivers are good at. Uh, it could be anywhere from 12 to 18 yards. And uh, he was one for two on it. One for two on the comebacks which is, you know, a route that I think needs to be incorporated more because of his speed. Because DB's got to turn and run with him because he's so fast. And if he could drop his hips and sit that thing down, that could be a deadly uh, weapon in his arsenal and in the Ravens' offense. And then lastly, well, not lastly, but got a snag. And what I call that is like a slant stop. So he has to basically run the slant and then sit in a certain spot so the ball can – so the quarterback can get in the ball. And I call it a slant stop, but it's part of the snag concept. And lastly, a post corner. He ran. Um, now, this play, I can't remember who it was, but he was on the left side. And he started off like he was running the post. And he kind of rounded it off and ended up going over the top of the 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 left corner, the left cover three corner, because he went to go do something else because Hollywood, like he was running away from him. And I want to say he was yeah I got he was overthrown. So it kind of looks like that that um, sting or whatever that play is that the Chiefs kind of ran with Tyreek caught. It was a route like that. He started to the middle of the field and he didn't just make a sharp cut and stick it. He just kind of rounded it off, and that's what I'm calling it, the post corner on this one because it was the only route that even looked like that um, in it. But I mean, just looking at the numbers and the, the, the thing should still be here over my shoulder. Hitches were good for him. Quick outs were good for him. Regular outs. Um, it's just a variation of things. The deep over routes, which required time because he could use his speed to run away from people. Um, quick outs, his quickness to get in and out of breaks. That kind of, t- the, the breakdown kind of tells you what he's good at. The shallow routes where he can get, you know, if he avoids the linebacker, he can outrun the other guy. Now, it was one of them shallow routes where he got molly whopped. And uh, he didn't catch that one. But um, only two double moves. Uh, only four corners. What else we got? Two of the, the comebacks. So some of the traditional things that, you know, a lot of wide receivers eat on, Hollywood doesn't, or it's not asked to do them. I don't say he can't do them. He's not asked to do them. Like, we, I can remember one traditional slant. And I could be wrong because other stuff was going on. So I may have missed a play or two in there. But I can only remember one traditional slant. But let's get to a couple of the the positive things, you know, film-wise with Hollywood, and then we'll go from there. So let's look at this play from the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars and the the Baltimore Ravens. It's um, first and 10 from the minus 30. And we talk about um, 
Lamar not being able to throw. This is one of the plays. This is a fade. So this is Hollywood down here, the bottom of the screen. That's me circling him right there. Let's just watch it. Let me put it in slow motion too if I can. Oh, no, I don't want slow motion. Not great off the ball, but he got off the jam. Now, watch it. He got. He's just going to put his head down and run. They're even at the 37-yard line. Let's see where they're at when it gets to 50. Hollywood has two yards on him. Uh, add another yard at there. Now look where the ball is. He's giving himself enough room for Lamar to fade him outside. Not a lot of room, but enough room. Look where he catches the ball. Right at the top of the ticks. Beautiful throw. Beautiful throw. Outside, over the outside shoulder. Either Hollywood catching it or nobody. He watch. Look where the ball is. Outside. Perfect. You can't throw a ball better than that. Other than maybe lead him up the field so he can keep running. But the placement is great. While we talk about somebody can't throw, that's a that's a great throw, great route. As opposed to think back to the the uh, Patriots game when they just tried to give Hollywood a chance versus um, I think it's number twenty seven, and number twenty seven just pinned him to the sideline and ended up getting the interception. That's the difference right there. Getting you know, let's go back and see if he stacked this guy. They're they're just below the bottom of the numbers. And once he gets even, let's see where they end up at as far as in width of the field. I gets pushed out. He's real low. Now, he didn't necessarily stack him on this, but the numbers are so... I didn't realize how far in the numbers are compared to what I deal with on a daily basis. What I deal with on a daily basis, the numbers are way down here. <laughs> but this, he didn't have to stack him because he had so much room to work. But he won, he won this by alignment then. He won this right by alignment. Just getting just below the bottom of the numbers. And simply just outrunning the guy. Not being jammed up and outrunning the guy. Because that wasn't the greatest of releases. That little hesitation helped him out. And now I'm just going to outrun you. Now right now the DB's in oh shit mode. But that's one of the plays. Uh, that's one of the things Hollywood can do. All right, this is one of the, the scramble drills we talked about. This is the one I mentioned about the Cowboys. So let's check it out. Well, versus the Cowboys, rather. Hollywood's at the top. Has a curl route. Curl not open. Uh, everything else is locked up. So now it's the scramble drill because I got to adjust and, you know, give my quarterback an added to throw the ball. Pivot out. Got bites on it. In the bucket. Can't throw, huh? Watch the placement of this ball also. Hollywood does a great job of adjusting and, you know, realizing, you know, basically scramble, when you get scramble drill, it's basically get open. It's football from when you little when and you you playing in the streets with cars and you got to avoid the cars and the 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 fire hydrants and people walking is that's what the, that's what scrimmage really is look at the placement of this ball who else can get to that ball nobody not keep sweat nobody it's a great placement of the ball great placement great concentration look what i love about this is his eyes are locked on that ball you got to catch the ball. You got to have your eyes on the ball all the way to the top. And like I tell, you know, our kids, everybody can catch. You catch with your eyes, though. Those who can concentrate and focus the, the best are the best catchers. Everybody got natural reaction with your hands. Everybody. Don't let nobody tell you wrong. Everybody got natural reactions because if I throw something at you, you may not catch it, but you at least keep it from hitting you in your face. So everybody got reaction with their hands. It's who can focus the most to catch and then snap it in like that. All right, this is one of the plays where, I, like I told you earlier, that he does a good job of 
of um, finding space and zones. This is Hollywood right here in the slot to the top of your screen. Let's just watch it. He has a little hitch route, but the initial placement of his route, he's not open and he kind of works to open works to open space. He gives the quarterback a good target. Just sits there. Just sits there. Simple. That simple. You know, everybody, like, other guys would have, like, kept running with Lamar to maybe, you know, keep the same track of going across. But he didn't. He just found an open spot, threw his hands up, caught it, and got down because he knew it was going to get hit. Simple and nuanced stuff like that is, is what's starting to separate him, you know, and make him a better receiver. And this is the last clip I'm going to show as far as clips on about Hollywood. Um, I really like this route. I think we ran verticals and ran a, a deep dig up underneath it. And his ability to, to, to get deep and then break it off and just run to a wide open middle of the field is, is, is crazy. They're way off. You got them verticals. And he sits down and just finds that space. Just finds that space. Didn't mind going up making the catch because it was a little high. But just watch when he breaks out. He just works at open space. And even though I know they carry them other guys, because he's looking at it now. Cannot they, he's just waiting on it to clear out. They're clearing it out, and I can see it. And just make sure I get this ball. And he does another, He does a thing well, too, that I like that Lamar does. He don't take a lot of shots. He don't take a lot of shots. He gets down and gets out of bounds. But, um... You know, basically, I just wanted to share those few clips with you and summarize my findings from watching all these clips. And this guy could, you know, his catch percentage was 58%. But I think if he get 100 targets again this year, that would be around 75 80%. And he can push 12 to 1,300 yards. So, um, this is my little breakdown of Hollywood, Marquise Hollywood Brown. This is Coach Edwin with Tip the Tally Films. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And, again, thank you all for the support. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. we we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. With the, 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 the